everybody, thank you for joining me here at the morning pour. Of course, it doesn't really matter what time of the day or evening it is, wherever you are, when you happen to be watching this. You're always welcome here and it's always a great time for a pour. If you agree with that, go ahead and give this a like, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so that you are always notified of my new video releases. As you can see on the counter space beneath where I'm working, there is the leftover green paint from when I did the paintings for the St. Patrick's Day Luck of the Irish Parade collaboration. It's the leftover dried remnants of my Luck of the Irish Parade collaboration pour. Aside from the green that you see on the surface space below, it's my intention to show you anything else but green. I, for one, have seen so much green. I have enjoyed the color. I have enjoyed all of the beautiful St. Patrick's Day themed inspired paintings that I've seen. And I also have had more green ones that I was planning to show you. But when I sat down to start editing them, I realized that probably like you, I need to see some other colors besides green, at least for a little while. So that's why you see some really pretty corals and some peachy colors in this beautiful cup layering that I have done here. And well, now it's off to the side as I'm getting ready to pour the contents happily onto the canvas. It's my idea that this is going to be a tropical pour, just bursting with beautiful color, with reds, corals, peachy colors, apricot type colors that should come out in the mix because of all of the blending. And then of course, I do have a couple of spring green colors and that deep turquoise hue that you see down in there in the puddle. And then of course, my white and my golds. So this should be very colorful, at least in terms of all of my intentions and grand visions that I've had in mind. I love watching the paint flow out of a cup, whether it's coming out my own cup that I'm pouring or whether I'm watching another artist on their own YouTube channel. I love watching the paint flow out the cup. Let me know in the comments below if this is also something that you greatly enjoy seeing take place when you watch acrylic pouring videos. I'd just love to know if you feel that way as well or what parts of the painting process really do you enjoy? I'd love to know that. So here I'm going to take a moment and just torch this, just bringing any air bubbles up to the surface and allowing them to pop. Ideally, we want to get as many of those popped as possible before stretching out the paint. And just take a look at all of this detail. I'm completely amazed with the amount of beautiful detail that is sitting before me right now. And look at all these gorgeous colors. I see those corals, those deep apricot type coppery sort of hues that I was thinking I was going to get. All of it looks like it is there. I even see off to the upper left what looks like the red, the deep reds. We'll see what that looks like when it stretches out. I'm hoping it's going to be the reds I had in mind, but of course, it's always hard to tell what will take place when we do this style of art. We hone our craft and we take our bets and we execute things to the best of our ability, but in the end, there are always some surprises, right? I think that's part of the frustration and part of the great joy of this particular art form. So here I'm just also letting my puddle just sit and rest. The more we let the paint rest within reason, of course, we don't want to let it sit there too long, but we allow for the cells and some of the interactivity to take place. So now, for those of you who are somewhat new to acrylic pouring, the reason I am adding this greenish color out on the outer edges is to help my puddle actually flow better. 
this is what acrylic pour artists refer to as flow extender. The reason that we do this is not because we of course are going to keep this paint on the painting, we're not. And so if you're kind of new to the art, you might be thinking that this is a terrible waste because it's all going to flow off anyway. Why would I use any more of my paint on the canvas? Well, it's so that the integrity of the composition of what's in that beautiful pour will remain as intact as possible. There are different elements that take place within keeping that beauty as intact as possible. One is controlling our tilting. We want to control our tilting very well, which you'll see ahead, but also this flow extender helps tremendously because it will just help this puddle move more easily and not roll over on itself. When the paint rolls over on itself, it can start to distort the beautiful composition. Now you'll see I am tilting very slowly, very cautiously. Look how slow I am moving this paint. This is such a not steep angle that I am tilting with this canvas. It may seem kind of boring, but this is what you need to keep in mind, especially if you have not been acrylic pouring that long and you're not familiar with this. I'm starting to bring this puddle back, straight back in toward the center. You always want to bring your paint back toward the center, ideally. Sometimes you will see me or even another artist tilt in a slightly different manner than that, but this is the ideal overall when doing this type of pour. Sometimes, like I said, you will see something different, including even from me. Sometimes the paint just starts moving in a way that demands that you move differently with the canvas. But ideally you'll be able to come straight back and bring the weight of that puddle right back toward the center and then changing direction. Look at this everyone, look at this, look at the beautiful patterning that is starting to take place. And I love some of these beautiful cells that are in that outer edge. Of course, it was toward the upper right there before, but now it's toward the upper left because I just rotated that. Unfortunately, though, I see I'm starting to lose some of what I wanted, but some of it is still there. That's the unfortunate, frustrating part sometimes in the pour is that there's these beautiful cells that often take place in those outer areas. There's always something pretty, you know? You're going to lose something pretty, but you're going to also open up something else to make it become pretty, something that was more compacted before, such as what's in the center. So you can see that my shape is getting a little wonky, so I start to maneuver the canvas in a little bit different of ways to attempt to bring that back a little bit more into the shape that I would like. Just bringing that back around, reclaiming some of the shape. I'm actually able to bring it back into a shape a little bit more toward what I'd like to see. So I'm just going to allow you to enjoy the sounds of the music while you watch the last few moments of my working the composition. Just slowly working it into what is going to be its final shape and in a few moments ahead I will of course be taking you in for some close-up shots as well as after that showing you the displayed final results. Again, definitely consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you haven't subscribed to my channel and if you like what you've been seeing so far. And please give a thumbs up if you're still here. You've obviously liked it well enough to be here, so please thumbs up if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments below anything that you would like to share, what you've liked about this painting, any questions that you might have. I'd love to hear from you and I will look forward to seeing you around here on my channel, The Morning Pour.